what I would like to do is give a bit of an indication of where we're heading uh, on the property investment market in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, and after that, I will touch on product availability in the region because it's starting to become a bit of an issue. Firstly, I would like to touch on one of the recent surveys that, that Peter's team has done here in, uh, in London in terms of intentions from investors across Europe and, and a bit wider um, globally as well. What we've um, listed here is investor intentions, let's say um, uh, the attractiveness of certain countries and regions across the globe, and this slide specifically focuses on Europe. Um, and gives us, of, us a bit of an indication of where probably most of the money that is being raised is flowing into um, in 2012. Looking back one year, we did a similar survey during uh, 2011, and that's highlighted in, in, in grayish green. And the results for 2012 are highlighted in, uh, in darker green. And what you can clearly see is that uh, most of the investors are currently looking into countries like Germany, the UK, and, and third of all, uh, CE. And of course, the comparison is not purely uh, logical because CE is a region and not a country, but still most of the funds that there are being raised are CE wide and not specifically in one country. So based on this, we are expecting still a significant um, amount of capital um, to be available in, in 2012 for commercial property and CE. Um, if we are looking back, um, and especially focus on the year 2011, we've had a very, very strong year in CEE. Um, Russia posted uh, the strongest results um, in terms of commercial property investment volume uh, during 2011. And CEE as a whole uh, posted the third strongest results in, in, in history. Um, but actually, we're, we're getting to a turning point, and that's highlighted in, uh, in this slide. Um, Currently, we're seeing the share of CE and the total European volumes uh, coming down again. Um, the record was around 12%, and this was similar to what we've seen halfway 2008. The question currently is, how is this going to continue? And I will get back to the results for Q1 uh, 2012 in a second. But obviously, the reasons for this are diverse. On the one hand side, um, the, the lack of financing is starting to affect especially certain markets. An example is, is Hungary, where there's hardly any financing around. In other markets, there's more financing around, but it's getting more restricted as well. Um, the second re reason is product availability. A lot of the, the better uh, quality stock has been sold already, and um, the volumes are being influenced by big, let's say, single assets um, sales as well as portfolio sales. So therefore, it's a bit, let's say, volatile. The results for the first quarter of 2012. So you can clearly see that the numbers for Q1 uh, 2012 are significantly lower than what we've seen during 2011. And I have to be honest, these are the results until um, um, the 23rd of March, and a bit preliminary still. And out of this, the Swati Terrazi deal was included. So still, as I said, big deals influencing the property investment volumes. And we know that there is a lot of, let's say, that there are a lot of big sized assets still on the market as well as portfolios. So this can change quite rapidly, but as I said, product availability and financing are playing a role here. In terms of a geographical um, allocation, most of the money is flowing into Central Europe. So if we speak about Central Europe, that's Poland, Czech Republic, Hungary and Slovakia. Um, and hardly any money is going to Southeastern Europe for the time being. Um, since 2011, so Romania, Bulgaria, are mostly illiquid. There were some uh, single asset sales, like the Mall of Sofia in Bulgaria um, during 2011, but these are exceptions. Eastern Europe, also a big chunk of activity, as I said, um, especially Russia, Moscow, some very large um, deals in, in St. Petersburg last year as well, are pushing up volumes there. But generally, most of the institutional cross-border capital is looking into Central Europe, <coughs> and then particularly Czech Republic and Poland. Focusing on Central Europe, so the four markets as I've listed there, Poland, Czech, Slovakia and Hungary, um, they are covering around 80 to 100% of the total volume in Central Europe, indicating that those markets are by far the most liquid. In terms of volumes, Poland covering almost 50% of that total activity. If we break that down by, by property segment, it's clearly feasible that the share of retail is, is on the rise, and this is something that we're seeing across um, Europe and globally. Um, investors are looking into conservative investments and focused on cash flow. 
Um, if we would add mixed-use scheme to this, I think we would get close to 55, 60%. And again, um, this is being kept down by the availability of space. And I will get back to that in a second. Office investments in the same region. So we're still speaking about these four markets. Um, the absolute volumes are interesting from a point of view that most of the activity, 60%, 70%, is taking place in Warsaw. So Warsaw can be seen as, as, as a very liquid investment market, also on the office side. Um, if we're looking into, let's say, the share of deals taking place outside of these capital cities, that's less than 10%, I would say, generally. So you can almost say that regional offices currently in these markets are a no-go. I mentioned already the most liquid European investment markets. Out of the list here, um, clearly led by London, Paris, then uh, Stockholm, and then at the fourth place, we're seeing uh, Moscow. So in terms of total investment volume, <coughs> Moscow is growing very, very rapidly. Um, of course, being pushed up by large developments there. Um, then most of the German larger cities, Manchester is an exception last year. And then at the 11th place, Warsaw just out of the, t uh, the top 10. So 1.7 billion traded last year. Um, so let's say this top 10 is slowly but surely starting to change a bit. There was on the agenda, I believe, one of the points um, is, is CE getting overpriced again. Um, based on that, I, I compiled this slide. And what is in here, in blue, is the 10-year government bond yield for Germany, generally seen as the risk-free rate. On top of that, we added the weighted average prime yield for um, the EU15. And in sharper green, we have the Central European weighted average prime yield. Um, consisting of the four markets that we have here. And in generally, we, of a generally, we can expect the same yield for Q1 2012. So this line will probably remain stable. In terms of the bond yields yesterday, the German bond yields stood at 1.94. So not too big differences compared to this one. Um, and if you compare the differences between these two lines, you can clearly see that we're almost at a point in time comparable to 2003, 2004, indicating, let's say, that real estate um, has remained a very um, interesting asset class from an institutional point of view. And looking back into the times when the spread was very, very narrow, um, I mean, it's almost four or five times difference currently. So from that point of view, I would say yields in Central Europe for the best quality uh, property um, should, should be um, sustainable. Of course, it all relates to, let's say, the, the demand side, how many investors will remain active in the market, but what we're currently seeing, especially for the centrally located assets, there is enough demand there. Um, just to continue on this point a bit, um, we highlighted Warsaw, Prague, and Budapest here. Um, the cyclical low in the market and the cyclical high, high in the market, and the yellow dot is the current yield. And I don't want to go through all these yields, but generally you can see that the compression that happened since the low point in the market wasn't that dramatic for Central Europe. So if you would compare that to some of the markets in Western Europe, um, you, you would say that that's quite sustainable. And there are examples in Germany where there has been more a compression already, um, some markets in, in the UK, Paris. So from that point of view, again, it seems to be quite sustainable. We then move to product availability. Um, the feeling is that the markets are getting tighter, and it's depending on how you look at these markets. If you really find it very difficult to find your products, or that, let's say, on selective occasions, you cannot find um, your groceries. Um, and based on that, during January, we did a bit of an analysis on the top, top 10, 15 best best buildings in these markets. And I don't have time now to run you through all the results, but this is for Poland. So what we've done here is that based on the list of best um, product for retail, office, and industrial, we had a look into these buildings if, if they were already sold since the start of 2008. Um, and for Poland, generally, you can see that 50% of, let's say, the amount of square meters of these, these properties were already sold at that time. And if I would do an update now, the share would, would be even higher. For example, I didn't include Swati Terasi in the statistics for retail. 
Um, and on top of that, there were uh, several properties at that time already being considered to be sold uh, during 2012, indicating that the product availability is getting, getting smaller in this top end of the market. If you would have a look into the results for, for Hungary and Slovakia, the situation is obviously different, but because of certain reasons. So on the, let's say, the standing investment side, it's getting tighter. On uh, the pipeline side, we're seeing uh, considerable changes as well. Um, in this slide, on the horizontal axis, we have the pipeline under construction through the end of 2013, based on what we currently see on the construction. And on the y-axis, the current vacancy in these markets. Um, on the one hand side, you see a market like Budapest, where there's hardly anything under construction, only one building under construction currently um, through the end of 2013. Um, generally, a very high vacancy there. The same would apply to Belgrade, Bucharest to, to some kind of an extent. And, and on this side of the graph, we're seeing that the markets are, are growing again. So more money is going into development in Warsaw, um, into Zagreb, much smaller. So there are a bit of two trends in, 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 in this. And what kind of an effect that could potentially have on a market like Budapest is generally seen as a very weak occupational market. Uh, we try to, um, to apply a couple of scenarios to this. Uh, currently, we're seeing a vacancy rate of around 18, 19% on offices in Budapest. Um, and based on general <laughs> absorption scenarios, um, and I will not bother you with the details, you can read that here, we are expecting, based on today's pipeline, vacancy to go down to around 14, 15% towards the end of uh, 2013. Um, generally, this will apply to most of the locations across CE, uh, with the exception of, of the ones where currently pipelines are increasing, obviously. <coughs> if we look into the, the, the logistics pipeline, and you can probably leave 2013 out because of the building time for logistics. But generally, the same is feasible, coming from very high levels of comp completions, 3 million square meters in, in 2008. We're currently at around 500,000 for the Central European region. So again there, the development market is slowing. And on that side, there will be less development product to become available. And then before I hand over to, to the panel, um, the last slide on, on shopping centers. Always, um, this has always been a very big driver of development activity in CEE. Um, the development pipeline is slowly but surely increasing a bit again, but then mostly in Poland and Romania. Beyond Poland and Romania, there's hardly anything on the construction, which, for example, for Czech Republic and Hungary is a good thing because of the fact that the market's already pretty well supplied. Um, but generally, most of the growth will take place in the countries where most of the growth, economic growth, is expected.